Hello, ISMers. I'm getting a lot of questions about Industry 4.0, Supply Chain Management 4.0, or the digitization of the supply chain. I think all of these terms are pretty much the same thing. When we say digitize the supply chain, or digitization of the supply chain, or Industry 4.0, which is in reality Supply Chain Management 4.0, because anytime you do anything, it's the supply chain that can have the greatest impact on whatever that strategic initiative is, like digitization. So what is digitization of the supply chain? Uh, first and foremost, it's basically taking all of the manual processes associated with supply chain management, in other words, all those things you do on paper, and doing them electronically, using technology to do them better, faster, and cheaper. So digitization of the supply chain is basically doing as much as you can electronically using technology and moving away from manual processes, especially on paper. Now, based on that definition, we've basically been digitizing the supply chain for 10, 20 plus years. So we're well along that journey. You can make the argument that digitization of the supply chain started a long time ago and it will continue to happen, but a lot of it is actually behind us, okay? Now, before I explain to you what Industry 4.0 is and why I simply call it Supply Chain Management 4.0, I wanna give you an example of why I think everything is supply chain management related. It's because anytime a company does something, and if they do something and it's a major strategic initiative to help them do things better, faster, and cheaper, if they only do it internally inside their four walls and none of their customers and none of their customers do it, and then none of their suppliers and none of their suppliers do it, you've really, really impacted the ROI and the payback period and the effectiveness of whatever it is that you're uh, initiating or implementing. For example, let's say you decide you're going to implement ISO 9000 in your company, the International Quality Standard. If no one in your supply chain and none of your customers and none of their customers implement ISO 9000, how effective is ISO 9000 really going to be? In fact, if you only implement it internally inside your four walls, the ROI and the payback period might not actually be positive. It actually could be negative because no one in your supply chain is also implementing it. So anytime you implement something, if your customers and their customers and your suppliers and their suppliers aren't on, aren't on board, then chances are uh, the, the strategic initiative whatever it is, uh, that you're implementing is probably going to fail or bare minimum not generate the return on investment that it otherwise could. Okay, so what the heck is Industry 4.0 or Supply Chain Management 4.0? I actually had one student say, I don't know what it is, but I think it's real, and I think it's going to be very real down the road, and will it cost me my job? So I want to begin by saying, no, it won't cost you your job. Industry 4.0 and Supply Chain Management 4.0 has been going on for 10 to 20 years and it will actually help you do your job better, faster, and cheaper. So Industry 4.0 or Supply Chain Man Management 4.0 or digitization of the supply chain is your friend as long as you embrace it in a way that helps you do your job better, faster, and cheaper. So what the heck is Industry 4.0? This is the way I look at it. If you know where everything is all of the time from beginning to end, and can talk to everything all of the time from beginning to end, to me that's industry 4.0. So now you're thinking, oh, what are you talking about? If you have data, complete data, real-time data, accurate data, all of the time from beginning to end about everything, do you realize and see the potential for being able to do things better, faster, and cheaper? One of the reasons people can't do things better, faster, and cheaper is because they don't have data, or they don't have good data, they don't have it all the time, and or it's not real-time data. So if you could fix all of those problems, imagine the potential of you to be able to do things better, faster, and cheaper. And that's what Industry 4.0, or Supply Chain Management 4.0, or digitization of the supply chain does for people, is it gives you access to tons of data that's real-time, that's accurate, from beginning to end, so you can figure out how to manage your supply chain so you're doing things better, faster, and cheaper. 
Okay, so how do you talk to everything all of the time from beginning to end? In other words, how do you have that information at your disposal? Well, there's this thing called a smartphone or an Android, and this is potentially what Industry 4.0 is. Imagine if everything from beginning to end in the supply chain had something like this on it. And this thing right here was super cheap, super small, and could do things like talk to you, gather information, take in information. It could do things like smell, weigh itself. It could say, hey, I'm too hot, I'm too heavy. Uh, or I'm here, but I'm supposed to be someplace else. So for me, Industry 4.0 and Supply Chain Management 4.0 and digitization of the supply chain is taking a bunch of manual processes, much of which is on paper, doing it electronically, and then this is the next level is potentially, for example, let's say all of your machines and tools in the factory have this on it and they're able to talk to each other back and forth, nonstop. And with things like machine learning and artificial intelligence, not only can they talk to each other, they can actually make decisions for themselves without our interference and actually make the right decisions so that we can focus on other things that they can't do yet. Okay, So that to me is Industry 4.0 and Supply Chain Management 4.0 is basically everything in your supply chain, being able to talk to each other, real-time data, complete information, completely accurate. And then you as a supply chain professional, taking all of that data and making sense out of it so that you can do your job better, faster, and cheaper. So is this a threat? I don't look at this as a threat as long as you know how to use it. So the question becomes, how do you prepare yourself for Industry 4.0 when everything has this on it from beginning to end? Well, if that happens and it's already starting to happen, what that means is supply chain management organizations are going to see gigantic amounts of data of which they have to make sense of, of which they have to make decisions from. So the key to you being successful moving forward in this era of digitization and Industry 4.0 is not necessarily the actual technology of Industry 4.0, but the data that comes from the technology. Okay, this is what you could do. You could get a mini MBA <clears throat> from Rutgers University that has a mini MBA for the digitization <clears throat> of the supply chain. All right, That would basically be around 10 classes. Now, if I look at that program and that curriculum, I want to get my MBA in the digitization of the supply chain. I'm going to get an Industry 4.0 MBA. I'm going to get a graduate degree in Supply Chain Management 4.0. <clears throat> when I look at Industry 4.0 and stuff like this on everything from beginning to end, that's a lot of software engineering, computer science engineering, IT architecture kind of stuff. That's not you. That's not me. If that was us, we'd probably be software engineers or computer science engineering majors, okay? So if you go get your mini MBA at Rutgers in Supply Chain Management 4.0, what they're probably going to talk about is some very mid-level and high-level managerial approaches and decisions associated with these technologies, okay? And I don't think that's you, especially straight out of school. Uh, so when it comes to the IT architecture and the engineering of it all, th th those are for IT types. Yeah, someone's going to have to make a decision on what technology investments to make, especially the capital-intensive ones. They're going to have to look at the payback period. They're going to have to look at the return on investment and things like that. That is typically going to be mid-level and higher level managers, and it might not be even managers from their supply chain management organization. It might be more from their technology side, the IT side, uh, that are making those decisions in conjunction with supply chain managers. So if students ask me, hey, Shima, I'm an undergrad in supply chain management. During my 20s, what do I need to know and be good at in regards to Industry 4.0 and Supply Chain Management 4.0 and digitization of the supply chain? I've got some pretty uh, opinionated answers in that regard, and this is my advice, is don't get worked up on the actual technology and the architecture and uh, in your 20s. Just be great users of the technology. In other words, if you look at the outcomes of Industry 4.0, for someone in their 20s, it just means you're going to have gigantic amounts of data to look at at your disposal.
that you're going to have to make sense out of and then make decisions from and you want to make the best decisions possible. So my advice is be great with the data. Become data scientists. Learn how to uh, retrieve, collect, clean, make sense out of the data. In other words, basically minor in business analytics or data analytics. Uh, get really good at like uh, data mining and R and SQL and Python and Tableau and Power BI and Excel. All the stuff that we teach you in a business analytics minor per se is the stuff that you have to be really, really good at. The, the industry 4.0 stuff, a lot of the actual technology, uh, you know, like I said, it's been going on for 10, 20 years and yeah, it'll continue to go on. But you're not going to have to deal with the actual IT architecture of it all. Again, those are for the IT types, the software engineers, the computer science engineers. You're going to have to deal with the gigantic amounts of data. And if you can't make sense out of it in a way that helps you do things better, faster, and cheaper, and make better decisions, then you'll become a victim of the technology. Not the technology specifically, but be a victim of not being able to make sense out of the data that comes from that technology. During COVID, I had a few students in their 20s and 30s and 40s become victims of COVID and the economy and downsizing, but very few. So I think it's really cool that I've had, what, uh, over 2,000 students over the last 20 years graduate from the ISM program. And I can count on one or two hands how many students total were victims of downsizing during COVID. And for my students that were in their 20s, if you ask me what was the common theme for those students that lost their jobs during COVID, I would say it was my students that weren't really good with data. Not technology per se, but data. The inability to make sense out of data and make better decisions from gigantic amounts of data and gather the information, clean it, make sense out of it, and then visually present it to managers to help everyone make a better decision regarding whatever problem it was that they were trying to solve. So. If you're in your 20s and you lost your job during COVID, I wonder how strong were your technology and data analytics skills. For my students in their 30s and 40s that lost their jobs, I think what happened there was they didn't get a lot of cross-functional work experience in their careers and they hit a ceiling professionally. And businesses, especially publicly traded ones, if they don't grow and learn, they die professionally. As a person, you likewise, if you don't grow and learn, eventually you die. So if you don't get a lot of cross-functional work experience and then you hit a ceiling professionally because of that and you're not growing and learning, and that's what happens when you hit a ceiling professionally and that's a function of not getting cross-functional work experience is because you lose the ability to grow and learn if you're just stuck in one functional area. They, they were victims of downsizing. You know, people at very high levels, senior buyers, commodity managers, even directors, they never got out of purchasing. So a lot of our students get internships in purchasing, they graduate, they become buyers, and they get really good at buying stuff, but then it's 20 years into their career, they've never moved out of procurement, they hit a ceiling professionally, they're no longer growing and learning because they're not working cross-functionally and working in different parts of the company and maybe in different industries, that they become victims of downsizing simply because they're not growing and learning. So when it comes to technology, industry 4.0, all of that stuff, I see in your 20s, master the technology to the extent that you get really good with data and making sense out of it. Then longer term, get cross-functional work experience. Uh, don't pigeonhole yourself in one functional area. Supply chain management has many functional areas associated with it. That's the cool thing about a job rotation program is uh, the ability to get a lot of cross-functional work experience early on in your career and potentially during the first two years of your career. So that's why I say those opportunities come along and the employer says, would you like to go on a job rotation or get straight into a full-time job? Uh, make your decision uh, wisely regarding what you think, both what you need short-term and long-term. Okay, my final comment here. I'm going to exaggerate for effect a little bit. This is in a, in a perfect world, if I was in charge, this is what I would do is... If you think you want to major in business, you have to be wired a certain way, right? I mean, if you like little kids, you should be a school teacher. Uh, if you like helping people at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder, maybe you should go into social work. Uh, if you like building things and designing things, maybe you should go into engineering. But you've selected business as a major. That probably means uh, you're driven, motivated, you're somewhat individualistic, you like to be rewarded, but you also like to work in teams to get the job done. You like being a part of something where the end game is a value proposition that delivers 
a product and or service. So I think you would agree that you have to be wired a certain way uh, to be a business major. And if you're not, you're probably in the wrong career path. But I'm assuming that you are wired in a certain way that's a good match with what typically a business major looks like. So in a perfect world, I think this is what I would do. I would make every business college in America say that every single student has to be a supply chain management major. Okay? The reason I say that is everyone thinks that if you major in supply chain management, you pigeonhole yourself into this type of career path with these specific skill sets. Nothing could be further from the truth. The supply chain management major is probably the most well-rounded business degree that any student could get in terms of any education. Okay, for example, we teach you to be leaders, problem solvers. We teach you a combination of soft skills and hard skills. And when you look at these soft skills like negotiation and these hard skills like data analytics, pretty much every job out there on the planet, no matter with what company, what industry, what functional area, if you look at the soft skills and hard skills that we teach you as supply chain management students, it's so well-rounded you could say, well, for a lot of these soft skills and hard skills I'm learning, pretty much every job and every vocation actually requires them. What job doesn't require negotiation skills? What job doesn't require some strong understanding of contract management and legal terms and issues? What job doesn't require making sense out of data? Uh, what job doesn't require problem solving skills? All jobs require those skill sets at really all levels of management. So I would say, Every student, if they want to be a business major, they should major in supply chain management. Then you might say, well, what if a student wants to go into marketing after college or advertising or promotion or finance or accounting? Then I say we develop tracks for those fields. So everyone's a supply chain management major. Then if you want to go into something other than supply chain management, we make the supply chain management so flexible that you can take these tracks where they focus on accounting, finance, promotion, advertising, marketing, human resources management. So that the supply chain management major gives you these well-rounded business skills and then you go into these tracks. If you're a supply chain management major that wants to go into supply chain management after they graduate, then you're good to go. Maybe we create tracks where we take you to the next level. So the supply chain management major requires that you take a procurement class, a logistics class. How about we have a track where if you want to get a supply chain job after college, we make you take an advanced procurement class, an advanced logistics class. So again, if I had a magic wand and I was in charge of the world, again, I think the education that you get is so well-rounded that every business major should do it. And then we should create tracks depending on what job do you want straight out of school. And then based on that, the industry and the type of job and the functional area, we create these tracks where we say, okay, you're qualified for an entry-level managerial position in that area, but then you have these well-rounded business skills that are very strategic in nature, uh, which will be the reason that companies will pay up and pay a premium uh, for students that have an education that looks like that. I think we do that with the ISM degree and program. And I think, you know, the results are there. Great job placement and uh, great starting salaries, advancement opportunities. Our students do great. Like I said, the only ones that don't are the ones that don't embrace the technology to the extent that they can make sense out of the data. And then the ones longer term that just don't get the cross-functional work experience and hit a ceiling professionally. Okay, that's a wrap on this one. A little shorter than usual, even though it's still about... 18 minutes long. Okay, have a great day.